Y'all right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kerbo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Alternus Kerbal Reeker Jiggered mod, which was originally made way back in the day by user Nova Celesco. It is now being maintained by forum user Gregrox Moon. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is a complete overhaul of the standard in-game star system. And oh boy, has it been around a while! In fact, this mod was one of the first planet packs ever made for the game all those years ago and was recently updated to 1.7. And so that's why I'm having a look at it here today. So let's jump into the tracking station and have a look at everything we get. And oh boy, there's a lot of things. For instance, you may notice we're now a moon. We're no longer our own planet. We're a moon. But uh, let's actually zoom all the way out here temporarily just to, and also turn off the ComNet network to see the entirety of our new glorious star system. And look at all the stuff and how far some of these things, like this lovely comet, is all the way from the standard system. It is pretty impressive. But yes, like I said, this mod just completely moves around basically everything within this solar system and also makes a sizable number of edits to them. So let's actually start at the, well, the sun, which has been made smaller, but with a lot more density so that uh, orbits and all, all stay the same. Now then, after it, we move to our first planet in the solar system now, and that is Moho, which Moho's orbit, besides being moved inward, has been made more eccentric and turned a reddish color, as you can see here. Now then, after that, we have Eve, which, oh my god, it's beautiful. I really, really like what they did with Eve as well. It's far more land-based than water-based now and has a glorious ring. And, well, if you guys have watched for a while, you know I'm a sucker for a good ringed planet. It's just beautiful. And after that, we have Jewel with... Uh, <laughs> An entirely new system of moons, and of course, Jewel has now been made blue, which I actually quite like. It's, uh, I think, fitting. Very nice looking. And its first moon is, in fact, Minmus, which, as you can see, has been turned red now. And, well, it's now 29 kilometers in size, which, um... is quite the change. After that, the next moon is a Lathe, which is... well... A lot more interesting. In fact, it's covered in jungles now and has a beautiful, breathable atmosphere for you to enjoy. After that, we have the moon, which is now a moon of jewel rather than of our own world. And as you can see here, it, uh... Yeah, it's been enlarged, actually. How by, what's the current size? I believe, uh... Yeah, 250 kilometers now. There we are. After that, we have... Kerbin, our glorious and beautiful home, which, um, uh, it's a new terrain. New terrain is the main option, or the main, uh, difference here, besides the fact that we are now a moon of jewel. So, pretty cool there. Uh, so yes, different continents to go and explore and enjoy, and I very much do like it. Now, next we have a bop, which is our new moon of a moon and it's only five kilometers in size there we go it's a very tiny little sub satellite for our new home moon after that we go to pole which look at that that um that's been made really lumpy <laughs> But there we go, 44 kilometers in size now. Now next is uh, Tylo, which orbits around the sun past Duna's original orbit, so it's a little bit further out than Duna used to be. And all in all, just a, a much more interesting looking world in my mind. I do very much enjoy it. Uh, next we have, of course, its new moon of Dres, which... Uh, yeah, I just I just love all the things getting moved around in this. It is very nice and uh, heavily cratered now. Very good. Next after that, we have the new Duna, which, you know, still has a nice little polar cap there. Not quite as bright red as it used to be. A little bit more tan. But overall, still a glorious thing. Though, um, now a moon rather than its own planet. But hey, I mean, it's still pretty cool. 
And then we have a comet, the one E, or the 1P, rather, Jillian's Comet, which uh, has quite the orbit radius of it. Let's actually zoom all the way back out. It's quite eccentric, but uh, still a pretty reasonable path. Now, after that, we have Elo, which is, well, really far away from everything else, and quite a difficult planet to actually get to here, but it works quite nicely, and uh, yeah, just a very lovely change to Elo. Then after that we have Val, which is Elo's moon, and uh, yeah, just another glorious little rocky planet. And then finally we have 2P Isaac's Comet, which is by far the body that goes out the furthest in the solar system, going all the way out here. Just look at that crazy orbit. It's beautiful. And yeah, just a nice tiny little orb or uh, comet here at 18 kilometers in size. Kind of hard to zoom all the way into, but there we go. It's just a lovely little rocky body. And that brings us back to the bright sun. And yeah, this is a very fun change around for the solar system. I do very much like how all the planets have been edited. And of course, my love of planetary rings, I do very much love what has been done with Eve. It's just a whole lot of fun. And again, like I said, this is one of the first planet packs that was ever released long before mods like Copernicus actually made it easier to do so. So this is a little slice of a Kerbal history and a just fun new adventure to send your Kerbals on. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today's episode, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next one. Hopefully, we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.